What defines a high quality out of school time arts program? And what does it take to engage urban low income youth in these programs when there are so many other options? The Wallace Foundation set out to answer both questions. They explore the issues in depth with experts, including urban youth and their families, researchers, academics, and the staffs of some of the nation's best arts programs. The research identified 10 principles for effective, high quality programs. This video highlights how some of those principles are part of SACE's formula for success. SACE approaches uh, arts education in a very unique way, but also in a very simple and honest way, in that we try to make art and the creation of art the central focus and the central theme of all of our programs. We have students from, who come from all over the city and from all different schools. Um, and so to have that here in one place, I think is a special thing. And I think if we're not bringing people together um, as, as part of our impact in the community, I think that that is something that would be a, a great loss. We create this culture of uh, trust and reciprocal learning and we provide uh, informal structures for students to get the most they can from the work that we do in the studios. But I think the most important ingredients are finding talented arts, artists, educators who are interested and passionate in working with youth, finding young people that really are passionate about their future as creative professionals, and creating a wonderful facility and an environment where those opportunities are able to grow. You know, our program here at SAC is a competitive program to get into. Not everybody that applies will get into the program, and we do have uh, a level of expectations for every student who joins our program. And, and you know, I liken it to the reality that um, in life, and in, in fact, for the rest of your life, there is gonna be a competitive process that you go through. It's a good, um, I think, mechanism early on for young people to understand that process of competitiveness. So if somebody's made that investment in preparing a portfolio and scheduling an interview and coming in and talking about their work, it allows us to really make the difficult decisions about uh, those students that really could benefit from our programs and organization. You know, our key success is that we're always raising the bar. There are levels of expectation for every individual student. What we do, which is important, is allow students to make mistakes, allow students to take risks, allow students to really um, push the envelope when it comes to their own individualistic approach to the arts. But what we really always do is work to criticize and to push and to make sure that students are doing the best possible work that they can do. Um, what makes SACE work is that our, our executive artistic director himself is an artist, himself loves and appreciates art, and so does our board. So it works. I think that there's a special um, relationship and understanding and a quality that happens when you have somebody that's both creative and analytical focusing on the administrative duties of an organization. And that's not to say that there aren't opportunities for strong administrative folks to run youth arts programs or arts programs in general. I think that that's usually the case more than not. I think it's the creative freedom and that our executive director allows the program staff and the, the, the program directors to have and artists uh, that take pride in their work like challenges. And I think that all the staff here at SACE enjoys that. If the leadership of an organization, you know, wants uh, results but doesn't want to take the time to understand art itself, understand arts education or, or have a genuine respect for, for it, then it's, it's probably not going to work as good as, as, it, as it could. Somebody that is not an artist can most definitely be a leader of an organization that's doing arts education. Art has to be a factor in the way that the program is looked at and evaluated. I, I do know of somebody that was a friend of mine that became an interim director of a large nonprofit arts organization who he himself was not necessarily an artist, but 
uh, that person um, definitely had an open mind, listened to artists, uh, engaged with the arts community to learn more about the arts community. And because he did those things, he was able to um, understand where artists were coming from and, and, and did a great job. In our middle school program, we actually hire and employ um, high school students to teach and work with uh, younger middle school students. And so um, in, in teaching and working with those young students, they're having to articulate and rely on their own knowledge and experience. We have a self-assessment sort of form the students fill out. And some of uh, the questions in that form are related to how, we, you know, how they would like to improve the program. We, we definitely take in consideration what the students have to say you know, as far as improvement. And in the past, we've actually taken a lot of the suggestions and trying to include it in the program. We have weekly meetings, and it's informal meetings. And, and during those meetings, a lot of students tell us, you know, hey, we want to do more narrative you know, films, or we want to do more music videos, or we like experimental, or, or this, or we want to you know, explore more with certain programs. And we, uh, instructors and the director, we we tried as much as we can to incorporate all these suggestions. We have a system where we have student liaisons, and so each program has a, a sort of student leader, and the student leader uh, responsibility is to communicate with the instructors um, or communicate to the instructors so what the other students are, you know, uh, wanted to do possibly in the future or if there's any issues. Peer mentoring within our programs is an important facet of the work that we do, and we look at it both in formal and informal ways. In the informal ways, it's what happens within that open studio environment where students are working and sharing and conferring together and helping each other uh, with their projects. And then in the formal way, we use uh, our high school juniors and seniors to become mentors in our middle school program. And we've built these structures uh, that are in place that really work to um, enhance and build on those relationships. Near-peer near relationships are, are very important uh, to the work that we do for a variety of reasons. Then the most important thing we do is uh, the students, you know, we're, we're, we're working to train them as potential employees in the future as well. So the students have to show up in time. They have to be with our middle school students during the transition time and snack time. And then they need to wait with them um, as they're being picked up at the end of the day. And what, what that does in a, a real sort of informal way is it builds those bonds and those relationships. And you know, I was really heartened. To, uh, I, I had taken a couple of students, both a, a middle school student and a, a high school mentor, to a presentation recently. And um, when they introduced themselves, they said, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce somebody that um, I really look up to and admire. And, and then when the mentor got up to, to speak, he, he turned and looked at that middle school student and said, I admire you just as much. It's important though that you focus on what the student is doing and what the student has to say rather than focusing on the student's problems or the student's uh, shortcomings or the student's lacking of some skill. It's our job then to actually validate that and say that work has value because you made it, right? And no matter what the level or quality of it is, you know, it's valuable because you made it and you have value as a person. So it's very easy to validate students' work, but you gotta give them a chance to make that work and it's gotta come from them. And then all those other issues, all those other socioeconomic issues that young people face, I think it will be easier for that young person to face those things, or at least they'll have more, uh, they'll have more strength in facing those issues. Right? if they feel good about themselves and the fact that they have a voice and they have something to say.